Here we go again. Mm -hmm. Another big name departure from the Trump administration. As the president tries to find a permanent chief of staff, he's now tasked with finding the new top defense official in the U.S. Secretary James Mattis will step down from his position in February, and he's giving a blistering reason for his departure. KCAL 9 political reporter Dave Bryan joins us with yep. the details. Yeah, and we are getting a clearer insight tonight about what was behind all this, what was going on. Although President Trump tried to dump the, uh, the fame or frame of the resignation of Defense Secretary Mattis as actually just a retirement, tonight it's looking a lot more like Mattis is leaving in protest of the president's decision to pull American troops out of Syria, leaving Kurdish allies in the region as targets. And in his letter of resignation, Mattis made a point that the U.S. must treat allies with respect, not drop out on them and leave them vulnerable to attack. What's clear tonight is that Defense Secretary Jim Mattis has resigned from the Trump administration. The resignation comes just a day after President Trump overruled his military advisors, including Mattis, and stunned U.S. allies by announcing that the 2,000 American troops still in Syria will be withdrawn. There are numerous reports now that the decision by the president was the final straw for Mattis, who was turned away by Mr. Trump when Mattis tried to convince the president to keep the troops in place in Syria. CNN Pentagon correspondent Barbara Starr reports that for Mattis, the resignation is about honoring promises made to U.S. allies who fought side by side with American troops in Syria. The president's decision to withdraw U.S. troops from Syria leaves those Kurdish fighters that the U.S. had pledged to support. It leaves them abandoned. It leaves them at risk. Mattis is a military man of 40 years. You do not leave your friends on the battlefield. And that's the position President Trump put him in. And it is at that point that Mattis had no option in his mind but to resign. In fact, Mattis's resignation letter to President Trump makes specific mention of the importance of those alliances and then goes on to say he is resigning because you have the right to have a Secretary of Defense whose views are better aligned with yours. I believe it is right for me to step down from my position. Former Defense Secretary in the Clinton administration, William Cohen, who spoke to Mattis about his decision, says the president's Syria withdrawal would have been a strategic nightmare for Mattis. You give a free pass to, the, to uh, Iran, uh, to President Putin once again, who likes this decision. You give it to uh, uh, Assad, uh, who is a known uh, killer as such. And then you say, well, you're giving him a green light to go in and kill all those Kurds right now. And you're giving that to Erdogan and Turkey. White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders says critics are dead wrong about Mattis's resignation. He and the president have a good relationship, but sometimes they disagree. Uh, the president always listens to the members of his national security team. But at the end of the day, it's the president's decision to make. He was the one that was elected to be president, to be the commander in chief. But even some Republicans on Capitol Hill believe the loss of Mattis and the withdrawal of U.S. troops in Syria could have serious consequences for U.S. foreign and defense policy. This idea that you're somehow doing a favor by bringing everybody home for Christmas, it's like a sugar rush. You're going to enjoy being home for Christmas for a moment, but I'll tell you, the military is absolutely disheartened by this. I, I, I mean, I'm hearing it from my friends a lot of what is the president thinking? Now the search for a successor to Mattis begins. Mattis will stay on the job through February 28th to give the president time to find a qualified candidate and get them confirmed by the Senate. So still a yeah. lot of work ahead for the president on this one. Dave, there are also some reports that U.S. troops are being pulled out of Afghanistan. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, quite a few reports actually this evening, and that's another branch of you know what happened with Mattis. The reports indicate that the Pentagon is preparing to draw down U.S. military forces in Afghanistan as well. The New York Times quoting two unnamed Defense Department officials who said about 7,000 American troops will be withdrawn from Afghanistan in the next few months. That would be about half the U.S. troops currently in that country, and it could be an early step to ending the United States' involvement in the 17-year war in that country. That, too, reportedly disturbed Mattis, who felt it would be a betrayal to Afghan forces who are fighting Islamic extremist forces. Many of the Afghan soldiers were trained by and backed up by U.S. troops. So, Juan, Sharon, right. back to you. Okay. Dave, thank you.